open qualifying round review. Hot. First things first, before I go through any of the stats, I just want to thank all of you guys who came down to watch. We had about eight people following our group to start with, about four on the back nine. We had people following James as well down there. It's fantastic. It was brilliant to meet you guys in person as well and have talks and chat with everyone. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my time there. It was such a good three days. Um, like I said, met some great people. Um, the golf club did an amazing job of hosting this event. It was so well organized alongside the RNA. Um, the course is looking in fantastic condition. I mean, when me and Harry played it two months ago, it was in good condition, um, but the greenkeepers just took it up to another level. It was fantastic. They really, really did a good job. Greens are running at 10.5, which is a really nice speed. The RNA didn't want to get them much quicker because they wanted to keep pace of play um, at a decent pace. Let's get into the round of golf. 79 plus 7. I know. Following exactly the same theme as the rest of the season has is just apocalyptically poor long game. Um, but I'm going to go through the scores and then I'm going to talk through the positives of what come out of this round because I feel like a lot of the time I can just moan about what was bad. So I'm going to take the positives from this round because there are some positives. There really, really are, even though I shot 7 over. So. This is how much of a roller coaster it was. Birdie, par, bogey, 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 double bogey. Birdie, par, 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 bogey, birdie, triple bogey, bogey, birdie, bogey, par, par. So up and down. Um, 40 on the back nine, 39 on the front, 79 plus seven. Fairways, I hit six out of 14 fairways, so pretty horrific. Uh, greens and regulation, eight out of 18. And putts, I had 30 putts. Up and downs, three out of nine, although that does not really reflect um, the standard of my short game. My short game was actually pretty good. It was just the fact that um, my long game was so bad that I didn't know which side I was going to miss the green. There were shots where I thought, okay, if I'm going to miss this anywhere, I miss this left. Pins tuck right, aim for center of the green, fade it in from the left. If it doesn't fade back, I'm on the left side. And if it misses the green, it's an easy up and down. That just wasn't happening. I didn't know whether the ball was going to start right, left, or... We're not moaning about stuff yet. I'm going to go through the positives first before that. Uh, sand saves, one out of one. So first things first, let's take the positives from this round. With sort of eight to 10 people who came up to watch, I felt very, very nervous on the first tee. Um, but good nerves, that means obviously it means something and it's important and I wanted to play well, which is good. And I just absolutely ripped a drive down the first. Um, slightly poor second shot in. A good pitch shot out of the rough, up onto the green, just left of the pin, left myself about 10, 10 feet, 15 feet for birdie. And I knocked that one in. Second hole, poor shot off the tee to the right. Missed it the right side because it's a dog leg left. I thought, look, if I'm gonna miss this anywhere, just make sure it goes out right. 52 onto the green, two putt. Um, the third hole, toughest hole on the course, almost made a really good up and down, just slipped out on the right hand side. Um, but that was a cracking chip shot I hit from the from the third from the third hole on the left hand side of the green. It was near enough impossible and I had about a space that big to land it on the fringe and managed to do it. Um, so the positives over those three holes which I took is I was feeling a lot of nerves and pressure on on the first tee and I hit I, I made a birdie down the first like a cracking tee shot. Um, and that's really another thing which I've been looking for reassurance this year and I had it in my first my first pro event last year and through every event which I play is under the nerves and pressure I am still able to play good golf it's almost like when the nerves and pressure aren't there I don't focus on the shot as much and I get taken away more by the bigger picture it's really strange it's like the more nerves and pressure I have myself or the more people I have watching the more of an ability I have to stay in the moment and focus on that shot because that's all I care about because I want to hit a good shot and then as I get to like hole three or four sometimes and your, your nerves kind of go from up here, your nerves and pressure sort of go from up here and slowly decline to the, the, the end of the first third or mid section of your round and I start to think about the bigger picture and I get ahead of myself rather than focusing on the moment and the cliche stuff of taking one shot at a time and just focusing on your pre-shot routine 
that's something I really need to work on. But that's the only really thing mentally which I'd uh, I take from this that I need to work on is the fact that I I need to have the little bit a little bit more of ability just to focus on the shot in hand as I go through my round. Sometimes it can slip and start thinking about other things. But other than that, mentally, I felt really good on the course, and <laughs> considering how horrific my long game was, I think I dealt with that relatively well as well. Like I mean, it was it was bad. It was very bad, um, on par with how it was at Prince's a few a couple of months back. So now it really is time for me to start working with a coach and work on this swing because short game wise, putting wise, mentally I feel pretty good out on the golf course. I'm feeling a lot more confident. Um, it, it's just it's my long game. It's hitting greens and fairways, and personally I think my course management is good. But if I if I can't hit my ball to my target, then my course management is pretty much useless. If I don't know where the ball's going to go, then how am I meant to manage my way around the golf course? <sighs> so there is a coach up at Minchin Hampton um, called Stuart Little. Um, I'm organising something with him. Uh, I'm going to be working with him once every two to three weeks. I'm going to be going up there and having a lesson. Um, Graham... Graham Arnott, he's also going to be helping me with my swing a little bit as well and tweaking bits and bobs here and there. My goal my goal now is from here to next season, I just need to build a reliable swing. Something where I know where the ball's starting and I know within a certain amount where it's going to end. Because at the moment, I don't know where it's starting. I don't know whether it's going to... I know I hit you know, a small draw on average, but sometimes I have that two-way miss. I can hit um, a block fade. I can hit a pull draw. Do you know what I mean? I can hit it at target and I can get it drawing, I can get it hooking. I had a double cross and then it'll, f I just don't, I literally don't know where it's going to go. And that's been the theme of the whole season. So now it really is time to build a reliable, trustworthy swing. A boring, repetitive swing where I know where the golf ball is going to go. I don't need to be hitting it a long way. I've got enough, enough distance anyway. I now just need, yeah, I just now need to build a reliable swing. I feel like my short game's there. My putting this week was definitely there. All the putts I hold for birdie were decent putts. They're all 15 foot or more. Yeah, I was just missing greens on the wrong side. Just leaving myself in very, very dif difficult positions with my approach shots. Um, some of that was to do with the tee shots, which put, put myself in bad positions, although I feel like the misses with my tee shots, except for one hole um, on the 13th, which is the first hole in the evening, um, except for that, I felt like I left myself in okay positions off the tee. It weren't that bad. I was kind of missing the right side, but approach shots were just miles off, just miles off. Obviously, I played with Harry. He qualified, played a really, really solid round of golf, shot two under, um, and then he got into the playoff. He was tied eighth, and then six out of seven people got through in the playoff. Um, he parred the first two holes, and then the third hole, which is the hardest hole on the course, um, he managed to par that one, and then two of the others bogeyed it, which means he got through and is now in final qualifying. Um, I caddied for him in that playoff, and it was a pleasure. He held his nerves so well. It really was. I don't, it's brilliant to watch. I, am, I can't say I'm proud of him. I can't bring myself to say that yet. But, but I love seeing my mates do well. I absolutely love it. Like... You should all be encouraging each other to do well, and when your friends do well, you should be seriously, seriously proud of them. And I am proud of Harry, he's done brilliantly to do that. Um, it was fantastic to watch the way he held his nerve, and I look forward to caddying for him in final qualifying this week. Um, some good names down there, Retief Goose and Thomas Bjorn. Um, so it's going to be a fun week. Hopefully get that boy through the open and get him holding the old claret drag. So overall, same as the rest of the season, we know what needs working on. It's the swing. It needs to... It's not so much a whole rebuild, but it just needs to be made reliable. I need to know where my starting line is, and I know I need. I know that I'm hitting a little draw back into the fairway. And then after that, I think we can actually start shooting some average scores, because I have not once walked off a golf course yet this year where I thought, played okay. Every time, she's been like, that is dog. I mean, that's horrific. Every time I've walked off. Another positive which I take from this is, in, you know, back in my junior slash early men's amateur days, if I came off a golf course feeling that I played horrific, I would have been shooting 82 easily. Whereas now, if I feel like I have a horrific round like this, 
I come off the golf course and I've shot five, six, seven over. And that's the theme for the whole year. I have not come off the golf course once and I feel like I've played average. Every single round has been, I've just felt like I've come off and I've played shocking. I think once I get this swing sorted and I know where I'm hitting the golf ball, I feel like my bad rounds are going to be, well, I'm I'm easily losing what missing on average, probably five, four or five greens too many in three fairways at least too many so I'm probably losing about four to five shots around through through my long game. Today is actually Saturday so this round review is like five days after open qualifying. Today I'm getting everything ready, ready to take Harry down to final qualifying tomorrow. He's currently in Denmark. I'm picking him up from Gatwick tomorrow night. Um, sorry, tomorrow evening at about 5.30 and then we're heading down to Prince's Golf Club. Ready for open qualifying. Boom. Thank you all so much again for coming down. It's amazing to have the support that I really do enjoy having people come down and watch. So if I ever am at a tournament or you see that I'm heading somewhere to play, come down, watch, support, because it is so enjoyable having you guys come. Yeah, although it's a bad round of golf, lots of positives to take. Let's work on the long game. Let's get this thing sorted, ready for next year. Oh yeah, um, something else has come up actually. So I might have another four or five tournaments on the card yet this year.